So we're taking another look at the selectivity uh, of bromination over chlorination. We'll kind of see what's the likelihood of uh, replacing a hydrogen with a chlorine at a tertiary versus secondary versus primary position. And it's a 5 to 3.6 to 1 ratio, tertiary to secondary to primary respectively. Notice a much higher ratio here for bromination, 1600 to 99 to 1. So what this ultimately means, like let's say you want to place the hydrogen on a secondary carbon versus the hydrogen on a primary carbon with a bromine. There's a 99% greater likelihood of replacing the secondary hydrogen than any given primary hydrogen. But that's not the only thing we got to worry about here. You also got to worry about how many possible hydrogens you could replace that lead to a given product. So you might be you know, 100 times more likely to win the lottery than me. Maybe you're just luckier than me or something. But if I buy 1,000 times more tickets, than you do. Even though you're a hundred times luckier than me, I'm a thousand times greater number of tickets, I'm still going to be more likely to win the lottery than you. So it works the same kind of here, way here. We've got to look at this selectivity by substitution, but also factor in how many possible hydrogens can we replace that lead to a given product. So if we look at free radical chlorination here, we've got two hydrogens on the secondary carbon. So, but these two primary carbons are equivalent and they each have three hydrons, and so replacing any one of those six hydrons would actually lead to our last product here in this case. And so to kind of figure out where these numbers come from for calculating you know, what ratio we're going to get and stuff, it's a combination of the two. So in this case, replacing a secondary hydrogen, that is a ratio of 3.6 to 1 over primary, and since there's two hydrons that we could replace, that's times two. So you're taking the likelihood, kind of the selectivity times the number of chances you have to lead to that product. In this case, that's gonna lead to 7.2. So, and for this guy over here, uh, he's primary, so that's one. And, but there's six hydrons that all lead to this product. So any replacing any one of those six would get us there. So, and then that's six. And so in this case, if you add these two numbers together, you get 13.2. And so the odds of getting this product would be 7.2 out of 13.2. And if you multiply that by 100, that's where that 55% number on the last slide came from. So here it's six out of a total of 13.2. And that's where that 45% number came on the last slide. If we do the same thing with bromination here, we'll see why we get such a much higher ratio here. So in this case, we'd have Secondary has a selectivity of 99 to 1 over primary. So and in this case, again, there's two hydrogens replaced. So 99 times 2 is 198. So and then for the primary here, so that is a ratio of 1 for the selectivity. And then we've got six chances to form it. So that's 6. And in this case, then we've got 198 plus 6 is 204. So we've got a 198 out of 204 chance times 100 to form this product, and that comes out to right around 97%. And then over here, we've got a six out of 204 chance, so times 100, and that gets us our 3%, and that's where those numbers came in the last slide. So oftentimes, it's not so likely to, to have to do a calculation like this for bromination. Uh, we just you kind of use this to show why it's so selective and how that results. But for chlorination, you often get a mixture of products, and oftentimes, the professor is going to ask you to actually predict and come up with these numbers. Now, they'll give you this chart here, so that you know what the ratio is for tertiary to secondary primary, but then you got to look at how many hydrons would lead to a given product being replaced and stuff like that, uh, and actually come up with these numbers. So oftentimes they'll round this 5 to 3.6 to 1 ratio to a 5 to 4 to 1 ratio. That way maybe they can still uh, hope you can get around the calculation without a calculator. A lot of OCHEM professors never want to introduce a calculator to the course and stuff like that. Uh, some professors will just skip this entirely and they don't want any calculations as part of their class. So uh, just cover my basis here because many classes will indeed cover this. Since chlorination is not very selective, the other kind of question that might arise here is uh, very commonly will be asked how many monochlorination products are possible in a given uh, free radical chlorination reaction. Uh, in this case, monochlorination implies that you're just substituting one hydrogen with one chlorine. So the question is how many different products could we form here? Well, whether we replace one of the hydrons on this carbon or this carbon, that would give us the same regioisomer at the very least. And whether you replace either of the hydrons on that carbon or that carbon uh, with a chlorine, same thing. And then finally, if you replace one of the hydrons on this carbon, same thing. So we're going to have at least three regioisomers. So and in this case, we also got to factor in stereoisomers as well. Uh, so in this case, if we do one of the end carbons, it doesn't matter if I pick the left end or the right end. I'm just going to pick the right end. We'll put a chlorine there. That's one possible product. We did not form a chiral center here, so we don't have to worry about R or S or any additional stereoisomers. That's just one product. So if we replace one of the hydrons on the carbons circled in blue there, 
So if I put it there, I'll see that this is indeed a chiral center. It's got four different groups. So this is not a sufficient answer. I've got to show the chirality here. So that's one possibility or the other stereoisomer here as well. And then finally doing it on the middle carbon, replacing it with one of the hydrons with a chlorine. So in this case, if I replace that with a chlorine, this carbon right here is not a chiral center. We do not have four different groups, this ethyl group and this ethyl group identical. And so that's just one additional product. And so if I include stereoisomers here, I see that I've got four different possible products I could form here. Now, if we ignored stereoisomers, then we'd treat these two as being equivalent. And ignoring stereoisomers, we'd only get three. So that question can be phrased either way, either including or ignoring stereoisomers.